So to get us started today, we are going to bring up the awesome Miss Holtzford, who is going to talk about Abby Sima. Come on down. So I was looking for that um, packet that I had the, the um, write-up in. I can't find it, which is fine. No, that's fine, because I have some other things. But, oh, I thought I had it with me. Well, you can just read this on, on your own time. But I just want to, um, but thank you, because I did want it. Um, so I have Abby for Sour. I have her for AP Gov. And uh, I'll tell you, she, I've been impressed with her drive and her motivation from day one. She is the quintessential AP Gov student. AP Gov, letter by letter. Here we go. A, achiever. Abby puts her best effort in this class, and that's admirable and awesome. P, personable. Never have I seen Abby in a bad mood or angry. She's always peaceful and pleasant. G, genial. What a kind heart Abby has. She is genuine, and I think that's great. <laughs> Oh, obliging. Abby is always ready to help others at a moment's notice, and she will state her opinion and also be open-minded, the best of both worlds. And V, valuable. Abby's a valuable part of our classroom. She and the rest of the students in first hour make the atmosphere vibrant and vivacious. So thank you, Abby. I feel lucky that I've gotten to know you. I would be a little bit worried if uh, Miss Naslin had to spell out words for me on that. So we'll just leave it as Zabby's, so that's good. All right, so rolling right along, we are going to bring up the amazing Ms. Naslin, who is going to talk about Nick Comella. Come on down. Right on the X. Something tells me, though, that this doesn't bother Nick as much as it bothers a lot of students. Because Nick, one of the reasons why he came to mind immediately, and I'm going to say that, you know, month by month when we get the email that goes out about nominating students, sometimes it's, you know, it's a matter of sitting there and thinking, huh, has anyone stood out to me? As soon as we got the nomination email about, does anyone have a senior to nominate? It was, I mean, immediately, I just thought, it's Nick Camella. There's no question for me that it was Nick. Um, we have a second period class, so that's homeroom, and that's our college prep writing class. Um, and academically, Nick is great, but I don't want to talk about him as Dr. K said. I don't want to talk about Nick as an academic. He's a wonderful student. But more than that, Nick is someone who I believe exemplifies every single letter in Daring. Um, he is a dreamer. He is resilient. He is inquisitive. He is, glo I mean, he's everything in that Daring acronym. Um, we needed a wellness leader. And we have a class of kind of quiet, would you say they're quiet? They're kind of quiet. Yeah. And no one was really volunteering. And Nick said, like, I'll do it. So he was our health and wellness leader, and I thought, well, that's really nice of Nick to be a health and wellness leader. Great. Well, he came in the first day that he had to give a presentation to our class from this health and wellness meeting that he had gone to, and I was like, did this kid already get a bachelor's degree in teaching? Because it's amazing. I mean, he was like, all right, everybody, tell me about this thing. And the, all, oh, he had the whole class participating. They were, he had them hand, raising their hands. He was like, let me give you a scenario. He turned off the lights. I remember he turning off the lights for something. And I was like, I'm going to make him write my lesson plans because this, this kid is great. Um, he is just, he's, he's one of those kids that you look at and you think he is going places. There is going to be success in his life no matter what he does. He is charming. He is confident. He is polite. He's kind. He set such a great example for students. He talked about how when he was in the library, he saw some freshmen leave their garbage behind, and he just kind of tapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, guys, can you pick that up? Um, it, one of those things that some students wouldn't even think is a big deal, I think it's a really big deal. 
Um, this is a cool, cool kid, and I just, I want everyone to know how awesome Nick is. So thank you so much for being in my class. I'm a better person for having known you, and I think in 26 years of teaching, there's a handful of kids who are really promising, and Nick is one of them. So. And now, when we're short on substitute teachers, we know who to call. We're going to pull Nick out of class <laughs> and get him going. All right. We're going to keep rolling here, and we are going to bring down the incredible Mr. Budge, who is going to talk about Jasmine McClendon. Come on down. All right, so um, Jay is uh, one of the students I'm fortunate enough to have for two years. I like to joke around in class, call them two-year veterans, and like I said, very fortunate that uh, Jay is one of them. Uh, she is such a positive influence on all the other students in class, and she's one of those students that just makes the atmosphere wonderful. Just her presence and just how she carries herself. She's a uh, you know, pretty quiet kid in class, but I'll tell you what, she speaks very loudly with her actions. I mean, very loudly and very positively. And it's just great to you know, just be around her, have her, have her in class, and her energy just exudes. Is that a good word English-wise? I'm a man. Okay, I don't know. Um, <laughs> And she's determined, most of all. And I'll give you a story. Uh, last year, uh, during uh, pre-calc, she, you know, she was doing good in the class, but that wasn't good enough for her. So she came to me. She's like, "Hey, is there some things I can do to to really excel in class?" I gave her a, a couple things, and I tell you what, not only did she do those couple things, she exceeded those suggestions. And um, first semester final came along. She got an A on it, and she got an A in the class. So it was just, it was awesome. And then from there, from that point on, it's just been, she's, she's never looked back. It's just been an amazing journey. Uh, she excels this year in calculus. I know I say the word calculus to some people, like, Ew. and not, not Jay. She excels, is doing a great job, and like I said, um, is a positive influence um, on her peers. And in closing, just a, a thought I have, um, just thinking about Jay, is in a world that, you know, we have so much information and words, I feel like sometimes we drowned in all the words, um, but sometimes people are hungry and looking for um, someone that just, you know, performs uh, actions in a positive way every day. Well, look no further than Jay if you want to see a positive influence uh, to other students. And I'm just uh, happy to have known her and happy to have had her in class, not for only one, but uh, two years. You are excused. All right. Moving along here, we are going to bring down the wonderful Mr. Loika to talk about Harley Baskin. Come on down. So, uh, one of the favorite things for both of us, probably, I, I know Harley is not one for the spotlight, my, myself either, um, but we were super excited that we got the opportunity to um, nominate her near the end of this year, um, backstory being Life's Journeys took Harley and her family away from LHS last year, and um, we didn't think we'd get to see her finish. Uh, however, as life sometimes does, she found her way back to LHS. And things do happen for a reason. Um, and the testament that she is what I'm about to talk about is that um, jumping into the curriculum in the middle of a semester uh, as a senior, not an easy thing to do. She finished with flying colors. She has set a goal for herself to finish her last semester as a high school student with straight A's and she's inches away from being right there right now, which is awesome, a feat that she's not accomplished in high school, and it's determined that that will be one of those things that she does. Um, but bigger than all that, her greatest gifts, resilience, testament that we can get through the most trying of times if we set our mind to it and believe in ourselves. Her kindness, a true desire to help others no matter their circumstances. Her work ethic, showing others that whatever the task is, we can achieve great things <clears throat> if we work hard her unique spirit, that she finds enjoyment in the little things in life, books, 
animals, friends, family, her green thumb. She has turned around many a dead plant from my office uh, and brought new life and joy to it and the world, uh, things that I didn't think could, could come back from the precipice she has brought back to life uh, in a way that certainly is going to inspire perhaps a career in the future. Um, she's looking forward to a future maybe in the University of Wisconsin uh, college system next year. We're excited to see where that path goes. She's going to share some amazing gifts and joys with whoever she meets along the way. And we're just so thankful that she came back to um, finish with us as a true Wildcat. Harley Baskin. My office is a busy place, and sometimes there's a lot of people who come in because they need something. Harley comes in almost every day, not because she needs something, just because she wants to check in, just see how I'm doing, see how my assistant, Ms. Kruckman, or Mr. Bruler is doing. And she comes in and just says hello, good morning, spends time, lets me know about her day, checks in on me. And so I'm definitely going to miss that next year when you're not here to check in on me, Harley. All right. Let's bring up, we'll bring the first of our science teachers up. We'll start with the extraordinary Mr. Schaefer, who is going to talk about Emily Detlaff. Come on down. Stand on the axe. Hi, everyone. This is Emily Detlaff. She's a gem, and you know I could say pretty much the same things that other people have said about how awesome their students are. She's got the highest grade in our genetics class, and she works very hard. I had her freshman year in uh, regular bio, and she also had the highest grade in the class. She's one of the hardest working kids I've had in four years here. Um, that's not why she's up here, though. But. She is amazing in the classroom. She writes well, she speaks well. But our, um, the thing that's amazing about her that makes her a little bit different than everyone else, uh, we have a, uh, an all-girl class of human genetics in my seventh period. In 32 years, I've never had a one-gendered class before. And with all women in there, it's all over the place. You never know where it's going on. Any one day, it could be any place. But Emily is always focused on what we're doing. If we're trying to do something, she's ready to go. Um, not to say that you know she can't go somewhere else also, but she's very good at staying focused. And she's very good at getting other people focused as well. And she's a black belt in Taekwondo, so I feel very safe having her in the classroom. <laughs> so it, you know, that helps as well. She, she probably needs to laugh at more of my jokes, but you know she's, she's getting better at that. Um, She's always in a good mood, always. I mean, she'll come in and I'll say, hey, Emily, how's it going? Uh, you know, Mr. Schaefer, it's been kind of a tough day, but it's good, it's, it's good. And on, on her worst days, she's happier than I am by a long shot. So, I mean, it, it's, um, she's incredible. Um, she, she wants to be an air traffic controller, and so we share this affinity for flying things because I'm a bird watcher, in case you guys probably don't know that. but. So we're driving back on the bus from, an, a, from a field trip, and Emily looks out the window and identifies the planes, and I look out the window and identify the birds. And so we have this bond that we share together. <laughs> so it's so good. And um, she, the last thing that really set her apart for me was that she got me interested in watching Peppa Pig and, and, Sal, and Sally Sheep. Is that who it is? Susie. Susie Sheep. There, it is. there you go. So I'm like, uh, who the heck is that? I don't know who that is. So... Um, she's a lot of fun to have in class. She's a great kid. She works her fanny off, you know, and there's just not enough nice things I can say about her, really. So it's a pleasure to have her in class always, and it's, it's an honor to embarrass her up here in front of all of you. So thanks, <laughs> thanks Emily, for being amazing. <laughs> Awkward thanks, hug Mr. time. Oh, of course. Thanks, Mr. Schaefer. <laughs> That is truly a match made in heaven when I when learned that she wants to be an air traffic controller with, with Mr. Schaefer. Got the metallic birds and the feathered birds. All right, well, let's keep it on the theme here of science. Let's bring down the wonderful Mrs. Owens to talk about Ashley Pignoni. Come on down.
All right, I'm Mrs. Owens, and um, I think as a teacher here, it's really difficult to get to know all of your students on a personal level just from. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Uh, so just in the classroom, I have been privileged and lucky to get to know Ashley as not just as student in the classroom, but as one of my athletes in gymnastics and also as a member and leader of my Caring for Cambodia Club. So I was lucky enough to uh, watch Ashley in Cambodia interact with students and teach classes and really impact the lives of others. And I think everyone else has done a fantastic job of speaking off the cuff, but I'm going to have to read mine because I might get emotional. All right, so I am proud to nominate Ashley for the True Wildcat Award. I've watched Ashley persevere through many, many, many challenges and come out ahead. In life, we all come to crossroads, multiple crossroads throughout our lifetime. And Ashley inevitably has chosen what I would say is the hard path or the right path, the path that fits within her moral compass. And this is not easy. And it's not always the popular decision for kids especially. Uh, no, not, maybe not just kids, but, but for everyone, adults as well. But Ashley always chooses the right thing. She has the conviction to stick to her guns and has navigated her way to a very successful high school experience. She has the courage to always do the right thing. I respect her work ethic, her confidence, and the way she supports and stands up for others always, no matter what, since the day I've met you. She's compassionate, sincere, kind, loving, a born leader, committed, loyal, is community service dri driven, is resilient. She's an artist, a scholar, an athlete, and a friend. The best friend you could ever have, and literally a lifesaver. I'm so proud to know you, and I am truly a better person because of our experiences together and watching you grow. And I'd like to say, I've seen you grow into this wonderful young person, but I, I think you've, you've always been that person. You've just kind of had to go through challenges of your own, and you are amazing. And I can't wait to watch and see what the future brings you. So. Glad you held it together, Ms. Owens, because I was going to lose it. It was close. I was right there with you. All right. Let's go to the musical Dr. Brown to talk about Chris, Kirsten, excuse me, Kirsten Tallender. So, <clears throat> you want me to hold the sign? No, I can do it. Okay. So, uh, the young lady, Kirsten, here she is. She's on a bus right now with the Wind Ensemble headed to uh, Augustana and uh, University of Iowa. They're doing a clinic over there. Uh, Kir uh, the reason Kirsten is nominated by me, I'm the choir director, is because not only is she in the top band here at Libertyville High School, she sings in the choir with me. She plays her flute in the orchestra program. She is involved in our theater department where she's a featured dancer in our musicals. She's an actress in our plays. She is also has been a four-year member of our orchestra's troupe since freshman year. She has danced on our stage. And uh, she just recently returned with my wife and I on our choir dance tour to Croatia uh, and Slovenia over spring break, where she sang in uh, cathedrals there and uh, did sign language and interpretive dance for the audiences in Europe. Um, 
Kirsten is an extremely talented young lady, and uh, not only is she talented in all these areas, but uh, she is looking at going on next year to college to pursue music education. It's a good profession. <laughs> I'm proud of you for that. Um, she's she's just, I mean, her biggest decision right now is, where am I going to go? I've got this school and I've got that school and they're both great. Or, and the third school is just as good and I don't know which one to pick. And I, it's like, you're, you'll make the right decision. Um, I, I told her that yesterday. I didn't tell the picture that. I told her that yesterday. <laughs> um, Kirsten is, is just like these other young people. She is, she's the reason that teachers like me and, and the rest of us here come to work every day. And that, and it just, it, it's an honor to get to celebrate that for all of you. I'll say that to those of you that are here because your te the teacher that knows you has said that. I don't even know some of you, and I would I, I feel like that I wish that I'd had you in my class just like they they got to have you in theirs. Um, Kirsten Townander is going to be a tremendous musician and a tremendous teacher, hopefully someday when she gets done with college. And uh, the final thing I'll say, what, what, joy, what, what brings joy to my heart is uh, just recently the, I'll put this down now. No, I'll, I'll keep it up. The, the freshman and sophomore band students are getting ready to do tryouts because they have to be placed in like next year. It's like, oh, what band do I want to be in? I want to be in this one or I want to be in that one. And they're nervous. Kirsten plays flute. And I, I saw her walking with some other young students with flutes who I didn't know. And they were walking back into the practice rooms and, and they were gone for a minute, and then and they're coming back out. And she goes, oh, yeah, well, just watch that rhythm in measure five. And then don't, don't lose your confidence and have that air quality going. She was helping the freshmen get ready for their audition for the, 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 the tryout for the band that they wanted to be in next year. She's already paying it forward now. She's not even a teacher yet. So we are extremely proud of Kirsten. If you're watching this later and you see this later, Kirsten, we're extremely proud of you. And we are so thankful that we've had you in our programs, and we wish you all the best going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Brown, I'm surprised being a Texas guy, you're wearing the Michigan State shirt over there. There he goes. That's good. That may be a first. Ad but no Texas Tech? Oh. All right. You might have to turn in your Texan card. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Um, every time I th try to think of a German word for like incredible or wonderful, it just is like wunderful. So is that wunderbar? wunderbar? The wunderbar Frau Lechner is going to come on down to talk about Jack Ianuzzi. Ianuzzi. I struggle with my uh, languages. Well, Jack, it's been a long road. We've had four years together, and I'm going to mention how we're here today. Um, Jack hat Beharlichkeit. Do you know what Beharlichkeit means? No. Well, it means perseverance, and he's got a lot of it, and that's why we're here today. You have earned this award because it's part of our mission statement, and I will quote, uh, one of our mission statements in the Daring is to create students who persevere through difficulties and overcome adversity. So, why? Well, as one of the two German teachers here, I do have the honor of sometimes teaching kids for all four years, and it's kind of like being a parent. You get to watch their successes and their failures and how they grow over that time. And so let's start with freshman year. We're not gonna dwell on it too much, <laughs> but let's just suffice to say that four years ago, there would be a time I would call on Jack and you'd be like a deer in headlights and completely freeze when he was expected to speak German. And yet he's still here, four years later in advanced placement German and doing very well, okay? Four years later, you have fully matured into a confident, self-assured young man who enters the classroom every day, immediately starts greeting everybody as if he's the mayor. He even <laughs> greets me. He asks about everybody's well-being and is just a confident young man. You challenge yourself in German by choosing the native speaker in our class 
quite often, okay? Uh, next year, Jack is going to nursing school. And as I watch you, a good-natured, responsible young man go off, I know that your Beharli kite, your perseverance, is gonna make you an outstanding nurse and it's gonna help you in everything you do. So Herzlichen Glückwunsch, you deserve this award. All right, I believe that we have our final student of the day that we're going to talk about, and it's with the awesome Mr. Schur, who is going to talk about Nate Massa. Come on down. So I'm a baseball guy, and uh, I am certainly glad I did not have to follow Miss Owens because that's like walking up after a grand slam. But I got my own grand slam right here. Um, and I would first like to say thank you uh, for the opportunity and congratulations to all the recipients today. I've had, being in the physical education department, all the kids run through our curriculum. So I've had many of the kids. I have Emily right now. I've had Nick several times. Um, many deserved recipients here. But I'm here to talk about Nate today, and the pleasure that I have in, in speaking about Nate is um, one that you might not see if you walked into class. Uh, Nate's in an advanced, was in an advanced weight training class. He chose to exempt out just a few weeks ago. He held on as long as he could. Um, and he was probably surprised when I still nominated him because he's now in a study hall. But in the window of time in our class, um, the things that were so enjoyable in our time together was you'd have to see the layout of the weight room. The weight room is shaped in an L. So the teaching, the desk is kind of at the fulcrum or the elbow kind of part of the weight room where you have to kind of monitor both areas. And, and the weight rack that Nate is in is kind of smack dab in the middle of the one side of the room. And the great thing about where Nate is at is Every single day, he just puts his head down. And it's funny because that's the first thing I thought of when I met mom and dad. Dad said to me, when they were talking about what they're proud of, as he says, Nate puts his head down and just gets it done. And I'm like, that resonates with me. And he makes those around him better every single day because of what he does. And we've got some younger kids in class, and I've seen him, whether he knows it or not, going over and helping the younger kids. So the thing that's, that's so special to me about Nate is our class lifts four days a week in the weight room. Now we have a hard time in America getting people to work out two, three days a week. He lives four days a week and he is an incredible self-starter. His internal motor is rubbing all the time, but he's really humble about it. He, you're not gonna know it, but he just gets his work done. Like dad said, puts his head down. Um, and the thing that's even more special to me was Nate had a, Nate had 100% going in class up until a week or two before he departed on, on the exemption. And he missed a day of school. And he came up to me the very next day and said, Mr. Sure, I need to do that makeup. And I said, Nate, you've got like a 99.2. I think you're going to be OK. And he goes, no, I want to do the makeup. And I just kind of shook my head when he walked away. And I'm like, that really didn't surprise me at all. So in closing here, I would just like to say, whatever field of endeavor Nate chooses to uh, embark upon, I know he's going to be a success in his extracurriculars and his other academics. He shines, and again, that doesn't surprise me. So, Nate, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. I visited uh, Advanced Weightlifting last year and uh, actually uh, worked out with Nate. I was his partner, and I lifted the bar, and he was spotting me to make sure that uh, it didn't drop and kill myself. So I have a huge debt of gratitude to Nate. Well, this was, uh, I think, a good example of why you see that um, whenever I get together with all my principal friends and they tell me about how great their school is, um, I always win because I get to talk about our true wildcats and uh, just how fortunate um, our staff feels to get to come here and work with such uh, great students and great human beings all the time. And uh, students, you know, I think what's important for you to remember is um, the great Maya Angelou once said, she said, you know, people seldom remember what you say, 
and they seldom remember what you do, but they never forget how you made them feel. And you are leaving an indelible mark on this building and on our staff by the way um, you have demonstrated your heart and your soul and your character as you come here each day. And I'm uh, very grateful for that.